Hello? What does that mean? They didn't suspend my license. I got a case closed. Okay? They zeroed out the account. The judge knew exactly what I did, and he did exactly the right thing. Now, I continued to get a bill for $200 a month from Health and Welfare till November of last year. When I was really, uh, at that point in time, just absolutely everything I was doing was the affidavit of denial, or specific negative of airmen. And I said, well, let me try this, because I'm sick of getting these letters from these people. So I wrote an affidavit of specific negative averment, and I said, this entity that you keep writing to does not exist, and neither do you. <laughs> I no longer get a bill. My bill, last bill that came from them was November, after they got it. Now, I did get one letter. And that letter was not computer generated. And the poor person that typed it is not very good at English. There were misspelled words, no punctuation. It was horrible. And it said, Dear Mr. Davis, and it was entitled in my name in all caps, case number, blah, blah, blah. And then it went to my upper and lower case name. Dear Mr. Davis, we must speak to you immediately. We have to talk to you personally. We can talk to no one but you. Please call this office immediately. And they signed her name. And I put it back in an envelope, and I wrote one little sentence. Is this a rebuttal to my affidavit? And I sent it back to them. Never heard from them since. Okay? That's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way it does work. But you have to have perseverance. And you can't take no for an answer. Who's in charge? You or them. Remember, the people of the state of Idaho do not surrender their sovereignty, sovereignty to the agencies they create. Who are they to tell me what to do? They don't exist. Okay? Give me liberty or something else. It's not my system, it's their system. I'm just operating it. Okay? Now, people all over the country, in some form or another, have used accepted for value, successfully and unsuccessfully. No one knows why. It's a random crapshoot. Okay? Some people, man, I mean, there's a guy, a friend of mine in Idaho, that maybe we'll do his court deal tomorrow, if I can write it up tonight, if I get time. But he did exactly the script that I wrote him, three, four weeks ago now. And it was a thing of beauty. The judge, by the time he ended up, was screaming at him. You know you got them when they're screaming at you. That's how you tell you're winning. Okay? If he's purple, you're doing something right. Now, it ain't fun, but that's the truth. He's just screaming at him, get out of my courtroom. Don't you say another word, get out. And as he's walking out the door, he says, I'm this is 45 minutes of this. As he's walking out the double doors, he yells at him, I'm going to issue a bench warrant for your failure to appear. Now think about the absurdity of that statement. <laughs> he's in a courtroom full of people for 45 minutes with a judge screaming at him, and the judge says he's going to issue a bench warrant for his failure to appear. Five days later, he gets a notice from the court. 
This is your notice that you failed to appear for your hearing. So we talked about it. And he says, what should I do? I says, what do you think? He says, well, I was going to accept it for value. I said, good plan. <laughs> this is a guy that it has an Oregon, it lives in Oregon, has an Idaho driver's license that's suspended in Oregon, gets a ticket in Idaho, and everyone he gets a ticket on, he just accepts it for value and doesn't even go to court. It just goes away. The state of Idaho Risk Management Agency sent him a certificate of insurance. We don't know why. <laughs> when he got stopped, it was for not wearing a seatbelt in Oregon. Then the cop runs his license. He doesn't have insurance. He hasn't had insurance for three years. Uh, he's got a pile of tickets for that. He's got a suspended uh, license in Oregon, but not in Idaho, and it's an Idaho license. All they do is tow his car, and it costs him some money to get it back, and a judge wants $175 from him. Well, Greg goes through this little spiel that I give him about what is my remedy, and the end result is that in the end, there isn't anything they can do. By oath of office, they are executing public policy. And when we turn it around and we say, listen, judge, we know just as much about it as you do. Now what do you want to do? I don't care to tell all these other people in the courtroom, Your Honor, what it is that you and I are talking about here. If you don't want to, I won't. I'm simply saying there's no controversy before the court. Why am I here? Okay? If I've accepted this matter for value, where is the controversy? I have agreed. Here's my, here's my signature for the money. What is the problem? What is my remedy? Now, I'm going to put it... How much time? We got a couple minutes? Okay. When we, when we take a short break here for the tape, when, when, I, when we start up again, we're going to talk about, in a, in a nutshell, how you can understand everything that we're going to talk about from now on. I'm going to try and clear up the mystery, because I got you good and confused, and now I'm going to clear up the mystery for you so that you can understand their role and their position in, in according to where we are in our position so that you understand exactly from HGR 192 forward where they are and what they're doing and I think that I can explain it to you so that you'll understand like looking at you and me right here.